What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty dope show. This one you guys recommended. Rogue Heroes. Yeah, SAS. Apparently, this is a series I didn't even know existed. Didn't even know anything so about good it. Good on whoever recommended this one. I actually really like this. It, episode one was so badass. Yeah. Like, I'm going to keep watching. For I sure. started watching episode two and I for, was forgetting that I have to like take notes on this. And I was like, oh shit, I'm just watching the show. It's so good. Yeah, it's really good. This episode ended crazy. If you haven't seen it and you're a fan of, of war movies, you definitely have to check this one out. This one's a banger. Yeah, for sure. So let's jump right into Rogue Heroes. If you guys haven't seen us in a while, you're new to the channel, do us a favor, like and subscribe. I know everybody on YouTube always asks you to like and subscribe, but it matters, it helps a lot. So we really appreciate it when you guys hit the like button. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, which is like 40% of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, it helps. And if you're already subscribed, don't hit it again. Because then you're unsubscribed. Because then you're unsubscribed, it goes away. <laughs> then our little feelings get hurt because we attach all our emotional stability uh, to things like, uh, you know, subscriber count and views. It's like all our self worth is tied into these things. You know, without it, we'll just start vomiting and being anorexic and <laughs> just a deep dark just, spiral. Just a, <laughs> a deep spiral uh. into self loathing and hatred. All right, let's jump into this wow. episode. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> <laughs> we have to like to save Sean's life. As a matter of fact, we didn't. <laughs> I've been watching my own fuel gauge move inexorably toward empty. And I have worked out that what it must be, you see, is that the convoy has been fueled with just enough petrol for a journey of 500 kilometers. Right. But the journey from Cairo to Tobruk is 500 miles, old boy. <laughs> but hit him with the old boy. Indeed. Indeed. Like, that's his boss, by the way. <laughs> He's totally shitting on him. Rightfully um, so. It's awesome. This guy's a total dumbass. Like, somebody miscalculated the kilometers instead of miles right. for the amount of fuel. So they didn't bring any fuel, and now they're just dead in the middle of the... Uh, the desert. Well, I think the issue was they relied on the French, and mm. the French filled up the trucks, and the French used kilometers, not miles, and so now they're stuck. Yeah, you're an idiot. It's never good when you ask him that you ask your boss the question, and he before he answers you, he pulls out a flask, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, and you should always be doing your own checks. You shouldn't rely yeah. on somebody to fill your vehicle for you, and then not be like, how much fuel do we have? How long is this trip? How you know? It's like." Do we have water? Do we have ammunition? Do we have it's it's just part of your, you know, TTPs to go yeah. through and make sure that you're good to go. Yeah, the whole like trust but verify. Yeah. Thing. It's like that's very nice of you that you filled up our trucks, but we also need to check. Yeah, I don't yeah. trust you. <laughs> yeah. So that I just thought that was a hilarious way to start this show. <laughs> it's just like not a total dick move. And by the way, they start every episode by telling you as unbelievable as this stuff seems. There, it's based on true stories. Yeah. He said most of it is true. So that's pretty awesome. Sand in your eyes, sand in your lungs, sand in your kidneys, sand in your foreskin. All will be forgotten. And the blood is out. Take it. Now, take a drink of rum. Drink. Do not think. 
Do not be yourself tonight. Remember this. When we are among them. That's pretty badass. Wow, that was badass. He's a member. Your mother is not watching. <laughs> He's like, do not be yourself. Yeah. That was a dope speech. You no, know, like, drink, don't think. Again, they're passing around a flask. You yeah. know, you're about to do some crazy shit. Yep. <laughs> and they did, dude. He's just shanking people. Like, dude, they went off on all those guys. Well, I was, I was watching. Like, I know this guy. Yeah. It's, was, it, was it Reek? Was that his yeah, name? Yeah, Reek. Okay, from Reek Game from of Game of Thrones. Yeah. One of my notes is that I was like, ah, oh, it's so hard not to see Reek. When yeah, I exactly. See him I see him like being dehydrated and frail. When he like he was locked up somewhere or something like that. What did they do to Reek in Game of Thrones? Didn't they cut off his dick? I think they did. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, they cut off his yeah. dick, right? Oh, yeah, they cut off his dick and they sent it to his sister. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a gift! <laughs> She's like, oh, it's so small. <laughs> Why is it so little? Like, dude, I wonder if it shrinks like like cold weather when it's off. Oh. Could you imagine? It's just like... <laughs> you got to call... Slim Jim like, at that hey, point? When he cut it off, it was this big, all right? Like, by the time it got to you... It you know, was it's cons- for the shrinkage. It okay? was considerably smaller, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh I think certain characters in movies could really fuck your career. Yeah, well the one I always go back to is the pie fucker. From American Pie. <laughs> American pie. Every movie what was his name? Jason uh Biggs. Ba- Jason Biggs, yeah. Every movie he did after that. He's just the pie fucker. Yeah, he's the pie fucker. Yeah. Like, hey, well, Tell your mother we ate it. <laughs> it's like every movie this guy ever does is always going to be Reek from yep. Game of Thrones. I can't unsee that. Same thing happened with Harry Potter and the guy from Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. the um, uh, Especially the the bad one from Harry Potter. Oh, Malfoy? Potter. That's <laughs> <laughs> a Potter. You shake hands with a man and you can't help but glance at his throat. Every part of the body... It's an invitation to be eagerly accepted as a dog. Accept a bone. Eyes are for thumbs to push into the brain. Mouths can be torn open. Necks are a gift. God's ultimate mistake. Spoons. Tea towels. That dude's speech is badass. He's, yeah, that's awesome. That's he, a classic psyop right there. <laughs> he talked him out of the fight, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he like, won the fight without even yeah. throwing a punch. They were like, uh, you have a good one. Yeah. And he's like, my winnings. <laughs> and they're like, here you go. My favorite part when he was like, the neck is a gift. <laughs> God's yeah. greatest mistake or something like that. It's like, eyes are for thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, we don't want to fight this psychopath. Yeah, this guy's going to fucking eat our brains with a spoon. Like, <laughs> wow, we're good, dude. I'd walk away, too. Yeah, man. I'd be like, I'm not, I don't need to find out. You got some issues. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want you any know, part of this. You lose that fight, you're going to have something shoved in your asshole for sure. <laughs> the asshole is a gift. <laughs> the asshole is a gift. Sometimes the airplane should them. Do you know parachutes, sir? Do you know parachutes? I know you strap them to your back. You jump. The thing becomes enormous. You land safe. Catch the damn thing before it blows into the sea, Armand. Put it back in. Put it back in. <laughs> All right, pause. <laughs> I get it, like, the whole taking it out is, like, because he doesn't know anything about parachutes. Yeah. And then he's like, put it back in. He goes, how, sir? He goes, how the fuck should I know? I was like, well, when I saw this, I was like, what dickhead unrolls a perfectly packed chute? Like, you have to have, uh, well, at least now we have riggers that go through and pack it properly. Right, yeah. To make sure that it opens. They go through weeks of training for yeah. that, too. So the last thing you want to do is unpack a chute and then try to shove it back into the the pack like that shoot's done so he just ruined the shoot until it's repacked by someone who knows what they're doing but as we'll find out in this show this guy doesn't really give <laughs> a fuck no idea he would have he would have jumped out with that parachute from the looks of it <laughs> just like, roll it back in or just hold it in your hand and throw it <laughs> yeah there's two things from the scene I like for one the first one is it's like the sf mentality right they're tactically kind of acquiring what they need to complete mm-hmm. the mission on these. And when he's like, you know, nothing belongs to anybody. If it's in your hands and it's yours. 
But the other thing is, what a typical officer move. It's like you create this big mess and then expect this guy just to fix it. Like, yeah. You're just like, look at the parachute. Oh, catch it before it flows, flies away. And then like, just put it back in. I mean, come on, guys. It makes me not like this guy. Like, I'm, I'm borderline. The fight scene, I was like, oh, he's really cool. And then the whole parachute throwing thing and like not taking any time to learn dick about parachutes yeah, before yeah. trying to jump out of a plane. Like, I was like, this guy is just really stupid. Yeah, I want to see how the character develops because it is. It's like you like him and then you're like, I don't know about him. And it goes, even the other guy, the, um, the guy with the bird yeah. <laughs> with the speech, like some of the stuff he says too. It's awesome. I love the mentality, I love the, the mindset. But other times you're like, you guys are just kind of stupid. Uh, yeah, like you're just throwing caution to the wind, like taking unnecessary risk, which we're about to see. Yeah, there's a but, there's a fine line between uh, bravery and stupidity. I guess it's in the name though. They're rogue heroes. They're, They're fucking rogue. something. <laughs> we're a bunch of cowboys. Yeah, we, we don't know what they are just yet. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what was he actually asking about? I'm in the dark, so it's all about playing. He had a message from a Lieutenant Jack Lewis in Tobruk. Jack Lewis. Whatever. Hey, God, you want through the roof? Ah, oh, whiskey. Bang, 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 one after the other. Memories of Scotland. You know how a bear in a cage sort of stands there and sways from side to side? <laughs> 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 So what did Jock Lewis say? Here, the Empire Cup tonight. Pause. These dudes are just ripping laughing guys. They're just getting high. You know, they're in Africa. It's a shitty place to be. They're hot. They're sweaty. They don't have the support they need, so why not? They you got, got a tank of laughing gas. They got alcohol and laughing gas. I'm going to hit it a couple times throughout the day. Yeah, they're chilling, dude. <laughs> this dude doesn't give a fuck. And he's an officer. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like I don't give a fuck. He like walks in, speak to his speaks to his commanding officer like he's a piece of crap. Yeah. Just like this guy does whatever he wants. I, to do. I like his his. Uh, he's almost like Maverick from Top Gun, where it's like he's kind of got this famous dad, and everybody's trying to compare him to his dad and be like, "You'll never be like your dad." But he's just doing his own thing now. Yeah. He's like, I don't really give a fuck. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'd like to use this table for a demonstration. How long will it be? It's a tournament. We're going to be here all night. And if you're gonna stand this day. We will charge you admission. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I'm afraid I have a rendezvous at the Kit Kat Club later, and I don't have a mic, gentlemen. I just got back from a deep desert patrol, and I am mad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like no one would know after a couple of seconds of no Grenade! boom. Yeah, like I'm gonna come back in there pissed off. Yeah. Anyway. I'd be going back in there with the six guys to beat those two guys' ass. <laughs> and this guy's all hung over. What if he grabbed the wrong one? <laughs> it's actually a grenade. You're just standing there. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, two <laughs> killed themselves. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> How much actual parachute training have you had? We spent three weeks jumping from scaffolding and moving vehicles. And rolling forwards and sideways. And the door opens to the wind. Almonds, take the door off. Yes, sir. But by the time this weather blows over, it will be dark. So, how will you find your way back if it's dark? Lewis, the stars, the stars. <laughs> so, with the storm and the fade in mind, why don't we pick again? Lewis, it sounds right, like your sergeant is. Dude, as soon as he said it, you had static line, and they're the like, what? Static that? lines. I was like, what? You didn't even know that it's a static line? <laughs> Imagine that guy didn't tell you that. You would have just jumped to your death. They would have jumped and been like, where's the rip cord? <laughs> <laughs> Idiots, dude. Like, come on. Like, there's a, there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. And right. they're all the way in stupid. It's funny because this the pilot, who I'm pretty sure is Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, also is <laughs> <laughs> very... <laughs> <laughs> is it really? is this it? guy knows everything. He's got very valid questions. Like yeah. it's a static line. Okay, so how are you gonna do that? They're like, all right, we'll connect it to the to there, to the floor, or to the chairs. And he's like, all right, well, nobody jumps in the desert. It's gonna be night. How are you gonna get back? Like how the door opens to the wind. Like he's got all these like legitimate concerns. The pilot instead should've... of shit, shitting on this guy, use him. Be like, yeah. all right, how should we do this? How can we make this safe? Instead of being this arrogant, pompous prick and right. being like, oh well, the stars. 
Yeah, and like exactly. You should be giving that guy like asking him questions. Okay, so tell us more about the parachute. What else right. do we need to know about it? How much you know static line does there need to be? Will it work on the chairs? Clearly, this the pilot knows more than you. Yeah. Pick his brain, and then the pilot's like, the door opens to the wind, dummy. <laughs> and it's like if he didn't tell you that, then he would have tried to open the door and rip the damn door off to the plane, and yeah. probably caused you to. It probably would have hit something, and you would have crashed. So, like, if it wasn't for this pilot, you would have died already, like, three times. And not once do you decide to, like, ask him questions and be like, well, what else did you think about that we didn't think about? I think one thing it shows kind of, like, it's the classic case of a leader not using their assets to the best of their ability and thinking that they're they're the leader, so every decision that they make is the final word and all that. You need to rely on your subject matter experts like this guy. You guys are about to get yourselves killed if it wasn't for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a this whole thing is like just totally stupid. I dig it. I dig the bravery. But if you were just asked some questions and figured that out a little bit before, you would have had an entirely different outcome, and you would just be someone that other people probably would want to follow, instead of only being followed by people that are completely out of their minds, yeah. uh, alcoholics and people with death wishes and stuff like that. It's like. Uh, you know, <laughs> it pays to be someone that people want to follow and feel confident in. Yeah. You can see why this guy uh, with the black hair, not Reek, but the other guy, why he's got the reputation that he has. It's well-deserved. Yeah, he's just a, a total dumbass. <laughs> he's an alcoholic. He's a drug user. He's, he and probably he's just did an idiot. get there because of his father. <laughs> the more we watch, yeah. the more I'm like, yeah, it's because Yeah, this makes sense. Fucking mud. At last. He gets it. I need a piss. Sorry, you can pause it. Chop, chop. Because for me, that is one of the truest parts of the movie. I don't know what it is. Every time I put on the harness, I immediately had to piss. <laughs> Without fail. As soon as the last buckle gets done and, or gets on and I'm JMPI'd, where they, JMPI, where they go through and inspect and make sure everything's nice and tight and where it should be. Which these guys did not do. <laughs> he's, he's walking around with his, thing, his like leg straps undone. They didn't do any kind of JMPI. They're lucky these things even hold them in. But yeah, every time I finish that, it's like, Damn, I got a piss. Dude, watching this whole scene gave me so much anxiety. There is so much going on. So if you guys don't know how that static line is supposed to work, is there supposed to be a steel cable, like the pilot said, that goes from the front of the aircraft all the way to the back. And then you hook your static line up to it, so that way you could walk to the the door, uh, the side door exit, or to the back of the bird, depending on what bird you're in. And then as you jump out, the your static line is rolled up and attached to your parachute. It extends and then rips out, pulls the top of the parachute out. Once you've cleared mm-hmm. the plane, um, it rips it out for you. But we also have reserve parachutes. So then if anything happens to that one, then we could pull our reserve um, in that we have control of that one. So you protect your reserve and then you could pop it if you need it. These guys don't have reserves. And another issue that I had with this, which again, they obviously don't know what they're doing, but it doesn't make sense to me, is why the first guy would jump and then you would wait so long oh, yeah. before you jumped. So all you're doing is increasing the distance away from each other exponentially. He's almost a mile away probably right. by the time he gets out. You're so far from the other guy. You would want to be one after another so right. at least you could link up once you get to the floor. Well, when we jump, we have so many processes and procedures, right? So we go through this whole pre-jump thing where they give us a countdown. We're ch- first, first off, we're checking each other's gear, checking our own gear. Then we get the countdown, and then when the light turns green, when it's time to go, we're all one after another. This guy just is like gets up and is like, "All right, I'm out," and takes off, and the other guy just sits there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, it's like, why are you sitting there? For get one, they didn't check each other's equipment, which I mean, back then, that's you know, I don't know if they did that back then, but anyways, like they don't know what's gonna happen once they jump out. And yeah, when this guy finds that he's getting tank or tugged at the door, and he has to pull his own shoot out basically before he even jumps. Stupid. Nightmare scenario, and we're about to see what happens here. Yeah. 
Ooh. Real quick, so before we see what happens to him, this is the part that bothers me because how cool is it? How cool are you now? How <laughs> cool, very cool. How cool are you now that you don't care about the rules, that you're never going to, you know, be told to stand down ever again you're a tough guy you're brave oh, you know all that machismo bullshit how cool do you feel now you're a fucking moron and th- this is like it pisses me off because it's like we get all excited with it. yeah fuck the rules fuck all that like we're too cool for all that until your dumb ass is floating down to your death <laughs> about to pay the price about to pay the price and you're up there panicking scared shitless you know probably had a fucking drawers full of, full of crap by the time he hit the ground because it's like it's not cool to be stupid <laughs> all right play <laughs> sound like mr t i pity the fool, pity the fool. thinks it's cool to be stupid yeah it just it's like dude, you're not cool you're just a moron it's not there's nothing cool about it There you go, man. That's what you get. Yeah, man. That was, I, mean, I felt that impact. Yeah, that, <laughs> they, they did, did a good job. They did a good job with that because he slammed. I've hit the. We've hit the ground pretty hard. Yeah, I slammed before. Sometimes I've come down. Just depends on the pocket of air, and I just barely fall. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And then other times you're like, slam, <laughs> like, and, and that's with a fully functioning shoot. Yeah. This dude had a giant hole in his shoot, and he just hit the ground hard, and then ends up not being able to feel his legs. Obviously, you haven't watched the second episode yet, so I don't know if he's uh, paralyzed. But yeah, he sees his dead father. <laughs> yeah, he almost died. Can't feel his legs. It's oh. not good. But anyway, this show's badass. I love it, man. It's I cannot so wait good. to see what happens in the rest of this. It's awesome, and I hope. And obviously, it's they end up becoming SAS, right? They end up becoming one of the best units in the world. So it is wild to me that the precursor to that was just these insane dudes yeah but it's cool it's a badass story and the fact that it's based on real events is pretty amazing so hope you guys enjoyed that episode thank you guys so much for recommending this show we love it so far can't wait to watch more episodes even if we don't do it for beers and breakdowns i just want to watch it yeah Uh, so great recommendation um again if you made it this far thank you guys so much for watching the show and supporting us on beers and breakdowns we know the scenery is a little different this time we're in texas because i didn't want to go to california this trip so we at my house, which is not as nice and as Abel's Theater. So that's why it's different. But we'll see you guys on the next episode. Like and subscribe if you like it and you want to see more. Drop your comments down below about which ones you want us to react to. And what did you think about this show? See you guys later.